Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Vancouver for OpenStack Summit. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signals from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Stu Miniman. Our next guest is Jonathan Bryce, Executive Director of the OpenStack Foundation. Welcome back to theCUBE. Yes, thank you for having me again. Great day one kickoff. Um, OpenStack flourishing. Um, the market <laughs> in cloud is booming, okay? You got the big guys rolling in, a lot of startup, some consolidation we saw last summer, some companies moving here and there, mm -hmm. uh, but still overall robust growth. Give us a quick update, what's happening, what's going on, what's the state of the union in the foundation and in the ecosystem? Yeah, well I, I think uh, you know the, the things that I'm really excited about are what we announced this morning. We have two big initiatives. Um, the first one is uh, around interoperability between OpenStack environments. The promise of OpenStack has always been this global footprint of clouds that give you compute, storage, uh, and networking in the same way, and that allow you to, to basically take advantage of this footprint wherever you need resources. Um, you know, that's something that the community has worked towards for years, and we now have tests and validation in place that, um, that really make it a reality and, and prove you know, how it works, which products and services are validated and, and, and in that. So that, that's a big piece. And the other one extends that even farther into federation between these clouds. So our latest release had a big update around federated identity that lets you take one cloud and connect it out to other OpenStack clouds. And if I have a user account in this cloud and a trust relationship with other clouds, I can provision resources in any of them. So you know, we're, we're really seeing the vision, we're really seeing the dream of what OpenStack could enable come forward and, and you know, be real for these people. Great, so Jonathan, you know, if we've been talking for the last couple of years, there's, you know, OpenStack isn't a singular thing. Mm -hmm. You've got all these projects, there's more projects coming in. Um, as you said, interoperability has always been one of the big promises. Um, so can, can you unpack for us a little bit, you know, what is, I believe, DEF Core is kind of the big initiative mm -hmm. uh, that you've got a number of companies working on. You know, who's doing it? How do they determine yep. what goes in and how interoperability works and what makes, makes that foundation? Yeah, so OpenStack has this massive community that, that just pumps out innovation constantly. And, uh, and it, it can be uh, confusing sometimes to figure out, you know, what, what, what do I need to deploy today? What should I be looking at for next week? What should I be planning for, you know, next year? And, uh, and that was really the, um, the, the, the thing that we wanted to solve with, with interoperability requirements. You mentioned DEF Core. So DEF Core was a, a committee that was formed um, from the OpenStack Foundation Board, as well as the larger community, to answer those questions and to come up with, what is the foundation for OpenStack? And they took a really interesting approach to it. Um, I think it, it took about a year and a half to get through this process. And it was uh, all along the way based off of feedback from users, based off of feedback from you know, this big strong ecosystem that we have, and looking at what is deployed, what's reliable, what's scalable, and making that the foundation for, for kind of all of the rest of those services. Yeah, so you know, many of us lived through some of the you know early Linux days, and mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> you know what is supportable, and you <laughs> yeah. know what can I do with my applications. So you know, where are we with with OpenStack? Yeah. You know, it, how do I know is it that if I do a solution that is you know, it, does it get a powered by OpenStack sticker on it, yep. or you know, how do I understand what I get and you yeah, know so, how so the various solutions? That's fit. a great question, yeah. and uh, and the the program that we have that's actually administered by the foundation, which is you know the independent nonprofit, is uh, is called called OpenStack Powered. And, uh, and as you said, you know, there's a logo, the OpenStack Powered logo, that these products and services get when they meet those requirements. Um, the thing that we also do, because you know, sometimes you want a storage solution, sometimes you want compute, sometimes you want both, uh, we require them to provide which components they support, which tests they pass, and to publish all, publish all that information. So you can see exactly what you're getting, what capabilities are there, and as you said, you know, they want to know, what app can I build on this, and what app can I move between one OpenStack cloud and another? All right, uh, so can you maybe just step back for a second, talk about just kind of the state of contribution and mm -hmm. OpenStack in general. Uh, you yeah. know, the board's gone through a lot of changes over the last year. I loved in your keynote, you really said, you know, how many people have contributed, and you know, a lot of people yeah. uh, that, that are here at this show. You know, what, what, what's your feel, kind of the gestalt of the OpenStack <laughs> community today? It, it is 
really unlike any community that, that I've ever been part of. And I've done a lot of open source stuff and been involved in a lot of different projects, but you know, there's something that is a true community movement here that I just have never seen before. Uh, the last release was uh, our Kilo release, and we had over 1,500 individuals that contributed code in six months for that release. 1,500 individuals from, I think, 140 different companies. It's a very broad support, and you know, a, lot of, a lot of people who are, who are pushing in um, changes. And sometimes, you know, one of the things that, that people will say, it was funny, when, when we started OpenStack, it was, oh, well, it's just a Rackspace thing. And now people say, oh, well, there are too many companies involved. So, you know, one way or the other. But the, uh, the, the thing that, that people sometimes say is like, it's just a bunch of vendors, you know, and they're supporting their code. And, but if you look at the top contributors to OpenStack, there are always users in that top 20 bucket. You know, it's not just Red Hat and IBM and HP. They're great, they push up, you know, fantastic changes up. But we have Yahoo, we have Comcast, we have companies like Cybera, which is a small Canadian organization, who are contributing and driving it back to user needs. Always, you know, keeping us focused on that, and that has been such a huge piece of what's made OpenStack work. Yeah. What, what about a marquee customer like Walmart? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we, we look at is, you know, wow, you know, Walmart, global company, you biggest know, company in the world, <laughs> company. Um, but you know, boy, they've got you know hundreds of thousands of people that could work on this, and the average enterprise, you know, <laughs> wants yeah. to just be able to consume this. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, how do you have that balance yeah. between a solution that works for a global audience versus, you know, kind of the, the typical enterprise? Yeah. The interesting thing about the Walmart. Uh, uh, the, the Walmart deployment is he has a much smaller team than, than you might expect. You know, a, a team that, uh, that you can count on two hands, we'll say. And, uh, and you know, the, uh, if you go back a couple of years, you definitely had to have engineers to, to uh, do a, a serious OpenStack deployment. But the software has come so far, and especially in the last couple of releases, that we see, um, we see a number of deployments like Walmart's and others that number in the thousands of nodes with teams that, uh, that are very reasonably sized, you know, five, 10, 15 people to run massive infrastructure that's critical to these businesses. What's, this, what's the, um, the evolution of the consolidation? We saw some, you know, Piston Cloud last year, we saw um, uh, Josh McKenty go to Pivotal, get Cloud Foundry out there, we got a lot of changes going on, Maranta stay in the course, yeah. in the distros. Yeah. I mean, what is the, what's going on in the consolidation, and what's the business it's model? the free market. In the, in the <laughs> <distro>. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to comp capitalism. Yeah. Yeah, but, the, but there's some business model things that are in flux, yeah. as you said, it's a robust community, so that's, you guys have done an amazing job there. Code is, people are shipping code and speaking with their code, so to speak. But the business model, what's the deal with distributions? Is yeah. there a model there? I mean, Marantz is obviously banking on that. Yeah, well, I think that, uh, that what we're seeing five years in is we are, we are really starting to see the market give us information about what models they want to consume, what models they're not you know, as ready to consume. And I think that the other thing that's happening is early on when a technology is brand new, there's a lot of value in just getting it in place, getting it installed and running. As the technology matures, you know, a, a company is going to have to do more in their product portfolio in order to, to really carve out a, uh, you know, a, a defensible position in the market. And I think it's a combination of you know, people adopting cloud, people deciding how they want to use that, as well as the technology progressing. We're, we're getting to a point where, yeah, yeah. There, there's starting to be some shakeout in, in how all of this works. I th and I think it's good, honestly, for, for, um, for the community and for the ecosystem, uh, because it's, it, it has to happen. Yeah, fail fast is the model, yeah, exactly. but you, all the messaging's there, you got interoperability, you got multi-cloud, <laughs> any app on any device kind of con concept going on with VMware's got that same messaging. Mm -hmm. um, I know we got um, you pressed on time, but I want to ask you one final question. For the folks watching, you know, we were teasing up the intro, like, hey, you know, every year it's like, where's the meat on the bone? And you guys are always constantly pushing out milestones and showing some great progress. Summarize for the folks out there, what is the meat on the bone this year? What is the big, uh, is the ball moving down the field faster yeah. than you want, slower, faster, because of the pressure, you got the big guys, you got Azure, you got VMware, you got Google Cloud, you got IBM out there, HP, the big guys are all, their customers want cloud now. Yes. They want it faster. Yeah. Can you pedal any faster? Well, Where, what's the meat in the bone? Yeah. I mean, the, the getting to interoperability and federation gives us an incredible footprint to build on. And tomorrow morning in the keynotes, we're going to get a sneak peek at some of those integrations. Companies want a platform that gives them stable, reliable compute storage networking so they can try out 
the next wave of technologies, pick the ones that work for them, and build on that solid foundation. And that is where we are in OpenStack, and that's what we're going to see this year, and it's really exciting how it's all coming together. So easy and efficient, fast and scalable kind of is the mantra for the... Yes, those, those building blocks that every application needs, you get them from OpenStack, yeah. and you layer in the other technologies that can drive your business forward. And the monetization, is, is it hand-waving at this point? Like, look, there's just enough, there's so much business out there. It's not about, can you monetize? The question is, how? Yeah, no, the, I mean, the thing that's no interesting real is, there, right? is as you go, as the market around OpenStack continues to mature, if you go through our, our expo hall, we have 120 companies in there, mm -hmm. and it moves to those other areas of value. It's not just about compute yeah. storage and networking, it's about big data, it's about platform as a service, it's about analytics, it's about mobile, and that's what we're now enabling, is, yeah. is you know, all of these other businesses besides just that core. The key point is enabling. Enabling yes. platform creates yes. a multitude of business models, yeah, exactly. depending on your view. <laughs> I mean, if you're in the distro business here, or if you're in the app business, that's kind of the whole philosophy of the foundation, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, Jonathan, thanks so much. I know we're tight on time, and I know you're super busy. Thanks for coming off the keynote here to join us on theCUBE. This is theCUBE, we are live in Vancouver for OpenStack Summit. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. We'll be right back after this short break.